All right, we are going to talk about a new cool algorithm, which is called principal component analysis. What can we actually do with this algorithm? Let's take an example. Let's say that we have collected some data. These data look actually alike. This data could be about people characteristics, people behavior, could be anything. Let's give an example. Let's say that here, I have the height of a person, the weight of a person, how many working hours does this person work, etc. And I have samples, which are these samples. I have one, two, three, etc. Okay, let's say the first person is 182 centimeters, maybe he weighs 85 and he works 12 hours. This one may be 171, weighs 63, and he works for 10 hours. Here it could be 174, weighs 90, and works 5 hours. It could be any data. Now this data here, maybe it's similar, but I want to find the relationship between them. The way to do this is by just plotting each two pairs, let's say I have height and I have weight, right? And let's say I have way more points than this. And let's say that I have found an almost linear relationship between them, okay? Now let's plot the second one. Maybe here we have working hours and we have weight here. Maybe, maybe the less working hours, the more the weight is. Maybe this is an inverse relationship. And we can continue to plot all the relationships together. Let's say here we have uh, the height and the working hours. And let's say we got some really unusual data because maybe they are not related at all. So by that we can take a look at the relationship between the data and we can actually plot them in 3D, right? So. Since we have only three coordinates here, we can just create a 3D plot like this, like this. This is my X, Y, and this is my Z. And I would be plotting all the points in the 3D space, right? See the relationship between each other. Let's say X is height, Y is working hours, and then we have the weight on the Z axis. Definitely we can do that. But... Is this really practical? Imagine if I have around 10 features. How would I even do that? Do I need to draw a pair of visualization for every two features? This makes totally no sense. This will take a lot of work and needs a lot of manual labor to check the relationship between each two. And even if I want to try to draw it in 3D, I can draw three features and assign them to XYZ, but if I have four features, how would I draw my axis? I can only draw in 3D dimensions. So this is why this is not really practical. And what we recite to is by creating a principal component analysis graph. Okay, it looks like this. We call this, let's say, component one, principal component one, and this we call it principal component 2. And then this algorithm is going to map out these 10 features and cluster the features that are close to each other. Okay? So we might say, see something like this, something like this, and something like this. Now it will create clusters for me and it will divide my data. It will tell me that these data are related to each other right here. So I have just clustered them for you without you having to draw all of these and try to extract relationships. Also, one more thing to note that the data that are on principal component one are more different than each other than the components on the principal component two. What I mean by that, that this pair here on the PCA1, or you can call it the x-axis, are more different than each other than if I am to compare it this data right here.
they are more different all right this is also an information that we can extract from here now after we have clustered we can map out those points again to our data and we can tell which data is clustering together if you don't still understand what are these points those points are nothing but the features so let's take these three points maybe these three points that we have clustered here one two three are nothing but height weight and working hours and we can see them that they are clustered together meaning that they are highly correlated right maybe those are for the other features that we did not actually mention so we can easily map them back to see now pca is of course used for predictions to predict where does this entry in the data set belong in a clustering uh, pca graph but also we use it to get insight on the data usually when we have multiple features like maybe 20 features or 25 features it's very very hard to find correlations between them so what we try to do is we pass them to a pca and it will map them like that and we can quickly see which data is related to each other and which data is not related to each other so it's great to get insight on a certain data set or a certain statistical problem